This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jeff Gardner. Welcome to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today we have two good neighbors on the show, Mike Kataruza and Ryan Hill of Wilderness Raw. I told you I would try it, man. I hope I didn't butcher it too much there, Mike. But welcome to the show, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. We're looking forward to getting into it. Sometimes we do a deep dive into the businesses, but I found more so to not do a deep dive and to go into this with very little information unless we know of the business quite well. I don't know of you guys that well yet because the questions I have, the audience likely has too. So uh, this is a great teaching moment from you guys to me. So let's dive right into it. What is Wilderness Raw? Wilderness Raw is more of a natural pet store. We try to limit everything to single ingredient or limited ingredients. Um, we're more on the health side of the dog. Less preservatives, the better. Beautiful. And, we, and we're sorry, go ahead, Mike. We tend to stick away from kibbles and that and, and stick to the raw side, their natural diet and build a healthier dog. Wonderful. And when did you guys start this? Uh, we opened Wilderness Raw back in 2018. Um, we were right before COVID and as we went into COVID, everything started to shut down. So we went from looking for a retail location to that. We went to a delivery model mm -hmm. and we took the online and we ended up building a great business out of the garage. And once COVID was over and everything kind of went back to normal, we found a retail location that suited us and we've opened up in Stroud, Stroud in Innisville. About a year ago. Yeah. Wonderful. So where in Stroud, what's the location? 7905 Young Street. It's in the same plaza as Stacked. So Young okay. Street's in, what was it, 10th Line? Young Street and 10th Line, or Victoria. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So you're going now six years. How has the business treated you so far? Business has been good. Um, mm -hmm. We started off the business more so because we wanted to start my dog on raw, and we built the business. You know, we'll sell to local people, friends and build a business that way and it took off and it came to the point that i didn't have enough room to do it in the garage anymore we built up we do deliveries pretty much all the way from woodbridge up to wasaga. collingwood wasaga midland midhurst everything like that and we have a huge client base that i never thought we'd get from when we started wonderful and do you guys mainly focus on simcoe county or are you going like what what's your targeted area I think right now it's just Simcoe, but yeah, it all depends on how everything just falls. We, we did have a larger delivery area in the beginning. Um, okay. As everything went through with COVID and everything started to skyrocket, we kind of teetered away from some of the areas that were a little bit further. Mm -hmm. right? when we ended up being almost $2 a liter for gas. We had to kind of cut things back because all of our deliveries were free. Yeah. Right. So we never charged a delivery fee to start. Wonderful. So you already touched on it a little bit, but there's some really important questions in the show. I mean, all have a good reason for them, but some of them are much more impactful than others. And one of them is the why behind it. Like, what's the story? Now, you said you wanted to get your dog on a specific diet. So we touched on it a bit. But if we could kind of peel back the layers of the onion a little bit, what brought you guys to this business? A, what's what brought you guys to this type of business? But second, entrepreneurship is difficult it seems like you guys have had a pretty good uh at, at least from what you i don't want to say easy it's not easy but it seems like you guys have been successful fairly early on which is fantastic entrepreneurship is still quite difficult so what led you to helping dogs in the way you do in this kind of um uh this or this raw uh these raw ingredients so much more healthier for the animal what brought you to that and what brought you to the point of saying we need to open up our own business now like we need to impact people because the food out there is of low quality or we think we can really help out our local community. What brought you to that point? What's the story? Well, I got a, an American bulldog puppy. We wanted to start yes. him on raw. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> we had a, a Boston Terrier as well. Um, the Boston Terrier, when we got the American bulldog was about nine years old mm -hmm. um, and we thought he was ready to go. And so we got a new puppy because we wanted to kind of space it out with the kids and make it easier for them on transition. Um, and the Boston Terrier was pretty much lethargic, just laid there. We, 
he was ready to be put down. And we switched him to Raw when we got the, the puppy, and he became a puppy again. So the Boston Terrier, the Boston Terrier was a rescue dog. Um, never had his ears perched because the ears perching comes from nutrients. So if they don't get the proper nutrients in their first stages of life, generally their ears won't perch. What does uh, that mean, perched ears? So stand up. They stand up. Um, with the Boston Terrier, when we switched him to raw, within a week of starting him on raw, his ears were perched and wow. he was a puppy again. And he was a puppy till probably he was about 14 when he started to slow down a bit more. Um, and unfortunately, we put him down recently. He was just over 15. So, so I hope people are really... Books, sorry, say that last time. Again, about yeah. six more years of life. So I hope people really heard that. I come from the fitness background. So I've been a trainer for the last 20 years, nutrition, sleep. I've helped a lot of athletes and teams, but I really focus on the training combined with proper nutrition not just calories, fats, proteins, and carbs, but the type of fats, proteins, and carbs, uh, where are you getting the food from, and then proper sleep. That seems to be the trinity for me. If you're moving well, eating well, and sleeping well, you're, you're pretty much avoiding the majority of problems that us humans face. But we often don't think of that with our animals. We give them food off of our table. We just buy you know, the kibbles or the wet food at the store, and, and that's the end of the thought process. Now, it seems to be coming... Uh, people are becoming more aware of if I eat well, maybe my dog needs to eat well and what is eating well, but nine years lethargic. I had two pugs. They both lasted about 11 years. So similar to Boston Terriers, um, not the longest life expectancy, but um, we fed them pretty well. But from nine years lethargic to five more years, essentially of high energy and then having to pass on. So that's that's incredible that you noticed it in a week or two from yeah. from what they should be eating essentially the difference it'll make to their body their hormones their mind and their energy yeah it was it was a complete 360 um he went at nine years old um he had cancer he had everything and he was at his point and the fact that he lasted the the five six years after that what was incredible yeah, it's just amazing. So what were you feeding your Boston Terrier before that? Just the regular stuff? It was just on kibble, usually from the, the vets and stuff like that. They're, they're specialty kibbles. Um, and yeah, it just, he wasn't surviving on it. Or he was surviving, he wasn't thriving. Now, now let me ask you, is it? do you guys put your food as high as a priority as your dogs? No, they eat better. <laughs> You eat and better. You, and most of our talk, customers will say that too, that the dogs eat better than they do. And you think we would know better, but obviously we don't. <laughs> uh, they, they have lamb, they have kangaroo, they have bison, they have quail, they have everything. And we sit there and have a plate a with a hamburger and french yeah. fries. <laughs> <laughs> Humans are so interesting. It's just yeah. amazing. It's like, look at how healthy my dog is uh, while I eat a cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It's amazing that that information you guys are now putting out there because we know how we feel about our animals. I mean, I've connected with few things as deeply as I've connected with uh, with my pugs, um, sometimes connect deeper with them than than other humans. So it's really nice to know that now we are learning what they should be eating rather than what we just made up. And I don't even know where they make the kibble, but not as suitable for dogs is what you guys are doing, certainly. Yeah, with, with a lot of the kibble products that are out there, the base product is really good. It's full of nutrients, but they cook it at really high temperatures to get off all the, the bacteria and that because when the dog's on kibble, their digestive system goes to an alkaline base rather than acidic base, mm. is what, which what they start off with. So they have to make sure that there's no bacteria or anything in the kibble or the dog will get sick. And that's where a lot of the recalls come from with kibble is because they haven't had a high enough temperature with it to kill everything off. Um, where with a raw diet, their digestive system's acidic, so it can kill all that bacteria and anything that may be in the food. Amazing. Amazing. So <clears throat> we talked about your business a bit, why you guys got into it. It's, it's a very similar story with all of our entrepreneurs. Only entrepreneurs come onto the show, business owners. <clears throat> uh, we want to hear their story, highlight their business, impact local lives of our community. But most of them will say in some sense when we say, why did you get into it? Well, I learned these things because I had this problem in my own life. And now I learned this new skill set. 
that uh, answered the problems to my life. I can now help other people. So I love that you guys did that in your own life. It, it, it's, a, it's a testament to what you guys do and what a lot of these entrepreneurs do. You've used the, your products on your own animals, saw the difference, and now brought it out to uh, the general public so they can see the difference, which I love. It's really a testament to the product. <clears throat> Something that I want to talk about is uh, a, a really important factor of the show is information. There is so much information out there in this day and age. Um, you know, if you go back 100 years ago, it was even hard to find information. I was just listening to Musk the other day, and he said the average person right now has more information than the most powerful person in the planet in 1980s or maybe even 1990s, which goes to show that there's a lot of information out there. Yeah. What is good, though? Right now we have to weed through it. So myths and misconceptions are often people hearing something from somebody that is inaccurate, but because it's their buddy or a family member or a mentor, they take it as truth. And now they go out in the world and make decisions based on what they think is a truth. So is there any myths or misconceptions that you guys can share with us about your products, about your business that people are thinking out there that is like, no, I wouldn't give that to my dog because of X. Can you clarify and empower them with some accurate information about how to increase the the lives of their animals. So a lot of people when it comes to the raw diet are in fear of the raw meat side of it. Um, and a lot of vets will tell you as well that it, it's dangerous to feed raw because of salmonella and bacteria, and bacteria in the, the food. But if we have the dog with an acidic digestive system, it, it'll eliminate all of those problems. Um, it's no real different than handling raw meat for your own food. You're still gonna take those same precautions. Right. So when we're done, we have to make sure dishes are cleaned, the, the spots are cleaned, just like we would if we're prepping for our own food. And I've heard this a couple of times, no expert on animals at all, though I do love them. And I love watching my documentaries and reading about them. But are all dogs, do they all come from the wolf line? They, their base lines are derived from the wolves, but they've been so genetically changed to breed down and make smaller. Like the Boston Terrier, for instance, used to be a 75 pit dog, right? 75, 75 pound pit dog and they would fight them. And now they're a 15 pound dog, 20 pound dog that they bred down, right? So the genetics have changed a little bit, but the dog itself still has the same teeth that a wolf would have. We don't have vegetarian teeth. Mm -hmm. um, they still are born with an acidic digestive system to kill all the bacterias. Um, when we switch them to kibble, they go into an alkaline base stomach because of the product in the kibble. Once we switch them from kibble and go back to raw, within 24 hours, they have an acidic digestive system again. That so, quickly? Yes. Wow. Well, we usually recommend you feed them an early dinner of kibble so that they have their meal. And by morning, you can switch them to raw. And usually by the end of day into the next day, their system has converted back into acidic and ready to go. Yeah, it's it's such an interesting thing because when I hear that that uh, you know dogs most dogs lineage come from wolves, I think they're hunting, they're eating raw. There's no prep to their meal at all, uh, and I think that gives us a bit of a better understanding of where dogs come from. But to for me, anyways, to just say treat your dog like you would a wolf, uh, I don't know is entirely accurate. So I'm glad you guys brought up that there is some prep involved in this. There is some cleanup involved in this if you want them to eat well, feel better but also lasts a long time so they don't get sick um, from certain things of raw food. So I really appreciate you clarifying that to us. And before we move on, what is raw? Like, how do you prep that? What does that look like? So raw can come in many different forms. Um, mm -hmm. You have whole prey, you have um, prepped food that you can buy, which like retail products that are, are blended together. Um, as long as we have the proper ratios of all the food that you're feeding them, whether it be whole or, or pre-prepped or blended or whatever you want, um, we have to have our organ in there, our meat in there, the bone, and it has to be within certain ratios. So you want to have them at, at least an 80-10-10 ratio. So they'd be 80% meat, 10% bone, and 10% organ. Um, if we add in veg, a lot of the, the different uh, veg for them, um, usually you're about 5% veg into their meal and so that will take away from the protein. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. So protein, I mean, I basically tell my humans the same thing. Uh, get your protein up, have your high quality fats. Carbs are important, but less so. So uh, for my pugs, when people hear that, I can't just hand them a few ounces of ground beef, put it in a bowl, right? Like I am missing the mark on that a bit. Yeah. They're not getting the proper nutrients at that point. Right. Okay. So they have to have their omegas, right? We, we either do like a quail egg, uh, duck egg, chicken egg, um, or we have salmon oils, herring oils, hemp oil, right? That gives them their omega three, sixes, and nines to to keep them there. That'll help with their their coat and everything to go. But um, we have to have everything balanced to a certain degree so that they stay healthy, or else they'll be malnourished in different areas. Yeah, yeah, and same thing with a human. So the bone is something that you know triggered a thought in my mind right away. Is uh, you know my little pugs, little mouths. Uh, little throats i imagine i don't know but in my head i imagine it's easy to choke on things when you put bone in there is it ground up or is it actually the bone for them to chew on strengthen their jaw muscles and all that depending on the diet you have them in um mm -hmm. if you have them on a whole prey diet then you'll have the bones obviously there that they chew and break down um if you have them on a blended diet it is all it's usually the bone dust right so when they cut the bones they take that bone dust and they mix it in because mm -hmm. with beef bones and that, they're too hard of a bone to put through a grinder. Um, but you'll have it where it's literally a powder or small chunks of bone in there. Finely ground. And can they, does it depend on the size of dog? Like as soon as you said ground, I'm like, okay, that's, again, my head's telling me that's what I would go to for a small dog. But is there a benefit to having these larger bones? Like I would just so fear that they'd get a little splinter and you know it would catch in their throat or something like that is that less common than i'm thinking it is yes so uh raw bones are rubbery they break down uh it's when they cook that they actually start to splinter so if you cook the bones and you give cooked bones they'll splinter and that's where you can have problems um with a raw bone it it breaks down so it, their actual digestive system will break down the bone and everything and it's very rare to have anything happen giving a whole bone as long as they're not swallowing the whole bone in the process All right if they're swallowing yeah. the whole bone they can have blockages and stuff like that but for the most part they chew them break them and and are good to go it's great information because every bone i'm thinking of in my head right now is after being cooked and that's why it's dried out and can splinter great information guys um okay let's pivot a little bit learn some things about mike and ryan right here so <clears throat> I ask this question on every show, of course, and our entrepreneurs will, well, I ask them about what do they get up to for fun? And the most common answer is we love our work. Our work is so fun. It's like, there's more to life than work. I think <laughs> work is just one facet of life. So anything outside of that, what does Mike and Ryan, the family, whatever you guys do outside of work, what are you up to that puts a smile on your face? Uh, yeah, the kids are getting <laughs> older. The goods, so. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> trying to, trying to uh, just spend time with the kids. Like I yeah. know when your parents say time goes, time flies. Uh, my daughter's 14 now, my son is 12 and I have no idea where the last 12 and 14 years went. So uh, I know my kids are uh, starting jujitsu this week, actually starting tonight. So I want to hopefully pop in there. Uh, usually just anytime spending time with them my parents are getting older so you know trying to spend more time with my parents getting the kids to spend more time with them as well uh you know, golf is always fun but the last couple of years with work i haven't had much time <laughs> to, to golf so uh yeah just with how fast everything's going just trying to spend time with the family yeah, I, I hear you, Ryan. So common entrepreneurial life, you work your butt off and then you hang out with the fam is essentially it. Okay. That's a, essentially what we try to do. <laughs> try, that's it. Now with, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now with the family, I mean, what are you guys up to? Do you guys travel? Do you guys watch movies? You guys in the sports? I heard you said uh, jujitsu, Ryan, anything else that's happening there? What do you guys get up to? Yeah, we have my kids. We have them in in hockey. They're in jujitsu as well. My daughter's actually one of the coaches uh, there. Um, we go to the beaches, hang out, go down to the toboggan and stuff like that in the winter. Do a little bit of fishing when we can. And if we had a winter, if we had a winter, <laughs> and uh, same golf and 
everything around. Yeah, yeah. My son's learning how to golf and enjoys it. His kids are the reason why I was putting mine in jiu-jitsu, so I think Ali might be teaching Kane on Tuesdays. So. Yeah. <laughs> should get there. How old did you say your uh, kids were, uh, Ryan? Uh, 14 and 12. And yours, Mike? Uh, my daughter's going to be 13 this year. My son's going to be 10. And, and let me ask you, jujitsu has a pretty good meaning in my life now. It's become much more, I mean, I know it's been around for forever, but it seems like we be, a lot of us have become more aware of it from these great leaders that are out there sharing the benefits with us. But why jujitsu? Out of all the things, they could be playing hockey, soccer. Why jujitsu? Well, uh, my buddy actually owns the gym. And he told me, he goes, bring the family. Let's do a private lesson and, and see if you guys like it. So... We ended up getting my kids in going a couple times a week. My daughter fell absolutely in love with it. If she could be there 24 seven, she would be. And everyone that is there, whether it be in the adult class, the kids class, everything just says, wow, she's amazing. So we built that. I started going to the adult classes with her here and there um, when we can actually get there and away from the business. Um, I own another business as well, which makes it hard sometimes to, to get there, but um it, it's just become a family thing right it became the the club that we go to is just it's an extended family now everyone there is amazing and we all help each other out we help each other learn it's not competition so everyone's there to help each other and it's just become a great family that way yeah i love it and it's a phenomenal discipline especially for our youths when that is one of the things they struggle with discipline seems to cultivate over the years I don't think it's something that we're innately born with <laughs> a little chaotic yeah. for those first 20 years of our lives bouncing all over the place. So if we can root some discipline in a younger person's life at an early age by having fun, that's a really effective combination. And I've just seen some incredible things come from people having a practice like jujitsu. Uh, some of the main mentors in my life, whether it's Krav Maga or jujitsu or some other martial arts practice, when I say to them, you know, what led to you becoming so successful? There's a list of things, but often discipline is there. How did you get discipline? And it's through these one of, one of these things. So it's it's great that you uh, have found some joy in there and that it is that family. It's very cool. And that your kids so young are already enjoying um, such a um, beneficial practice, really. So to move on from the fun things, um one we were, i was talking about at the beginning there's some uh, fundamental questions to this uh, podcast that really have some benefit for people so we like to talk about hard things um moving through our challenges in life being a human is not always easy sometimes very difficult but i think we still as a species have a hard time talking about our hardships because we um, correlate that with maybe shame or embarrassment potential judgment ridicule uh, sometimes there's still a, a good portion of us that look at vulnerability as a weakness when I think now it's becoming a little bit more known that it is a strength. If someone can be vulnerable around you and be confident with that, that's a person that's pretty sure of themselves that isn't so fearful of other people's judgment. So we like to uh, talk about the uh, hardships that we go through on the show because entrepreneurship is hard, impacting a community, being a good person is hard. And if we can highlight them, then we can empower other people to kind of dig a little bit deeper into their hardships and share it with others as well. So we like to ask the guests on the show, any trials and tribulations, hardships that you guys have been through personal or business that when you went through it probably sucked in the moment as hard things have feel hard. And that's usually not a great feeling, but when you look back in hindsight, you wouldn't remove that ingredient from the recipe that is you because it increased the value of your life in some way. Anything come to mind for you guys? Uh, for me, myself, um, when I was 18, we ended up, uh, I ended up in the hospital, um, had a problem with my head. So I have a blockage in my brain um, and have a tube that runs through my body now to, to move the fluid from the brain around so that I relieve the pressure in my head. Um, wow. That there changed who I was. I, at that point, was a little bit more uh, of an aggressor. Um, and after that, it showed me that how fragile life really is and how quick it can happen and, and go, um, after three brain surgeries, I was out of the hospital and it just, it changed who I was. It showed me that, you know, I have to be a different person and, and grow my life to be someone I want to be rather than fight through it and go that way. 
Damn, man. Three brain surgery. I haven't even heard of something like that before. And I mean, the health, fitness, the body, biochemistry, that's something that I get into a fair bit. I've never heard of that before. That's incredible, man. When was the third surgery? Like, was this all in your teens, 20s? This was when I was 18. I was in the hospital for about two weeks. I had three surgeries in those two weeks and a million CAT scans and MRIs and ended up coming out a different person, right? So now I live a normal life and hopefully everything is good that way. But um, no, there's a, a blockage in my brain that was pushing on the, the third ventricle, which is your drain ventricle. And they had to install a tube into my head to make everything flow. Damn. I was having massive headaches and doubled vision and everything. And so. What was the recovery like on that? Um, I came out of the hospital fine. Um, I was forced to recover. I was forced. I was 18, right? Uh, young and stupid and ready to go. And um, my work forced me to stay home. Um, I was ready to go back to work and they made me take six months off. Um, and my parents made me stay home and this, that. But overall, I, me, I was okay. Now, you said it a couple of times, but maybe I can just... Um direct some more attention to it as that's why we talk about um, these hardships is not just to have people come on here and say, here's all the worst things that happened in my life. It's like, well, what was the result of those things? So you were saying you were the person you were at 18, then you went through this and it led you to becoming a, a different type of person, one that you enjoy more, a yep. life that you enjoy more. Exactly. It, it made me live life and actually want to be a better person overall to enjoy the life that I have. I love it. And you, you touched on something that I, I study a fair bit. Philosophy is a big part of my life. I think philosophy gives you a blueprint to being a good person. Psychology is another big part that teaches you about human behavior. If I can know myself more, I can know other people more, but depending on the philosophy, most of them talk about the fragility of life, meditate on our death as it's, it's coming at some point. I think some people like to avoid it, but I think the reason philosophy teaches us, these um uh, to ruminate on the fragility of life is so that you do the things you want now you don't wait because time isn't guaranteed so i love that you mentioned that part we are fragile we also are resilient it's kind of like that yin and yang we are both but don't wait because time to a certain extent i think to a large extent is out of our control i really appreciate you sharing that with us mike anything come to mind for you ryan uh, it's more of just trying to figure out yeah like everything like your life i know you're trying to you're always trying to push 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 and go uh and the same as mike i've got a we, we both have two jobs with this being there and i know in the early days of you know learning how to get your discipline going i know my kids were young and i'd be working you know, at 12 14 16 hour days and you want know, the hardest thing to realize is after a time is like when you're working late those hours like i didn't see my kids tonight so it's one of those things where you got to figure out as much as you want to be dedicated and and push and drive as i mentioned earlier just the time with your kids it goes by fast so you, you do actually have to just learn to, to step back and spend some time with your family and even sometimes your parents once you move out you don't realize how often you don't see them and how much time you have left so it's just yeah it's a it's a hard thing that you, you still learn as you go it's not an easy thing to do no no i appreciate that and uh i think it's something that a lot of us entrepreneurs live with is we have this house to build a uh, metaphor for your business there's an argument that says the faster you do it the faster you can live in it and um reap uh the fruits of your labor but you get so caught up to being in full build mode that you're like oh my friends will still be there later and my health will still be there later uh, but if what you thought would be five years now turns into 15, it's like, almost like you've conditioned yourself to be this workaholic and that's yeah. where we become in that place. So what's the secret to, to life, Ryan? What's the secret to the balance of life? <laughs> like, like that's not a hard question. <laughs> Give us You're still thing, figuring man. it out. <laughs> Don't you remember what we said earlier, always getting yelled at? So those times <laughs> like, you're going to be home on time tonight? Yep. Yeah. And all of a sudden something happens and you're two hours late and your kids are in bed. Your wife's not happy with you. <laughs> you got to try it in the next day that's still it's still in the works it's a learning process and uh yeah you gotta play day by day 
Now, yeah, and I agree absolutely. There is it doesn't seem to be a hard science to any of these things. I am not a father yet. I do look at for manhood, fatherhood is the pinnacle of it. Actually, creating another human being, being a lifelong mentor to another being, create, bringing them up in your own environment. I think for me personally, that is one of the greatest ways to impact our planet is to be a good parent. So I am not there yet. Any recommendations for me as I'm moving closer and closer to that stage in my life? And I do those 14, 15, 16 hour days uh, very often. I pretty much spend all day on my work. So I don't want to be that guy when I get there. Any little tips for me? Be, when very, I get nice. There? be very nice to your wife in the beginning. <laughs> There's the answer, the whole, right? We like the whole process. Yeah, you have yeah. to, you have to make sure you find find someone that understands that is on the same page as you. Otherwise, that's going to be a rough road because kids aren't easy. They get easy, they get somewhat easier, but the first three or four years, there's a lot of battles you're going to lose. Okay, note taken. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Moving on from the personal back to the business a bit. What's one thing you wish the audience knew about Wilderness Raw in particular? Uh, Wilderness Raw itself, um, we've been growing it over the years. Uh, being that we weren't in a storefront first, uh, it was really hard to get product. Nobody wanted to sell to a delivery service. So we were able to get uh, one of our suppliers, uh, Raw Performance, that would deliver to us and would enable us to sell um, but when it came to treats and everything like that we couldn't get any of it so we have our own treat line uh, we have um, our own frozen products and stuff like that that we had to bring in and manufacture and, and figure so. out so that we could grow the business um, so a lot of times people walk in with us just being a retail store and it's not there's a lot of background that happens there with a lot of products that are in the store a lot of a couple of different brands that are our own and that's what leads to the longer nights and all of a sudden we're managing three four businesses rather than just one so is wilderness raw like the front end of your business what everybody sees and all the other businesses you run are connected to it in some way whether it's manufacturing supply yeah pretty much they're they're a separate entity but they're all conglomerated together and the Wilderness Raw is that front end retail. It is Only retail, one. yes. Yeah. yeah. And none of the other ones are retail. None of the other ones are retail. Um, we've had a couple uh, stores that have carried our extra products, um, like our treats and that. Unfortunately, there are stores that didn't survive and we pulled out of them. But overall, it, it, they've been a good, good product. Yeah. Wonderful. So you guys... Uh, get, um, you have your suppliers for lines of products, but you also make your own. So you're also yes, involved sure. in the manufacturing process for the products that you can't get from suppliers. Well, we can get them now. Um, yeah. When it was prior, before we had the retail location, a lot of the, the suppliers wouldn't touch us because we didn't have a storefront. No we weren't order. 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 Yeah. Right. So we had to generate product to be able to sell, to be able to survive. I love it. So is there anything... Rather than asking you guys, what are all your products? Is there anything that you don't have for our pups? And it, is this, this isn't just for dogs. This is, or is this just for dogs? Well, it's dogs, cats, small animals, like uh -huh. ferrets. You can feed raw as well, right? Things like that. So it, it's main, mainly dogs and cats is the focus, right? And then we get that little shock every now and then when someone walks in with a ferret and feeds raw and changes your perspective of what, you can actually do yeah right? yeah and so you offer a, a wide range from treats to meals to bones to chew on like pretty much supplements. everything yeah yeah supplements and we do have a kibble line in the store mm -hmm. um, which is very limited ingredients that not a lot of additives it's low temperature cooked which gives you nutri the proper nutrition out of the the bag itself um but other than that we kind of tend to stick away from them um but yeah, we try to have everything. If we don't have something, we have really good connection with all of our customers that do come. Uh, we know majority of them all by name. Um, and so if we don't have something that they're looking for, we tell them to let us know and we work on getting it into the store. Because if one, if one person wants it, usually there's a few more that will be looking for it. 
And so you guys will deliver to Barry, Springwater, Midhurst, all of these areas. Yeah, we go on a, a monthly, monthly delivery. Yeah. In awesome. a store, we're usually um, a daily delivery. Mm -hmm. Barry is usually weekly. weekly. Bradford is weekly. Um, down into Woodbridge is usually weekly. Um, and then we have monthly once we start going north from us here. Awesome, man. That is fantastic. That I, I right now I am sourcing out my next. Um, so I had two pugs, stout yeah. little things. I just love them dearly. I really think they changed me as a human being. But right now I'm looking for my next um, French bulldog. I'm going for a little baby Frenchie. Yeah. And I didn't know what you guys are teaching now. Back then I haven't had those pugs for about seven years. And I've been dogless for that whole time. I feel like there's a hole in my life I need to fill <laughs> I need a yeah. dog. Um, so, you know, I'll be looking forward to, to getting your products and learning more about it because I eat the way to an extent. I don't eat raw food, but I eat very intentional about my food the way you guys are with your with your pups. And I just love that. So back to you guys a little bit. This is my I know you guys didn't read the questionnaire, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you got it. But uh, this is the question that I leave out of it because I don't want it to be scripted. And really, again, I've talked about this a few times. This is a show to learn more about your business and services. But really, it's to learn about you guys, what you stand for, what your mission is. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it just dollars and cents? That's not a problem. But a lot of entrepreneurs usually have some deeper purpose to it. So your can, community can really know about you guys. So I asked this question uh, about impact. Been very. Uh, I only really talk about four or five things in life in general because – when I was younger, I studied things very broadly to try to find where my interests are, many different things. And that kind of narrowed my focus in the four or five things that I really enjoy and have impacted my life. So entrepreneurship, impact, purpose, fitness, those types of things, mentorship. And I was very lucky to have some great mentors in my life, especially in my early 20s when I was bouncing around like a pinball all over the place, no direction. And she encouraged me to think about my impact. She basically told me, like, look at your impact up to this point in your life. You're 22. Or is it something you're proud of? Do you have regrets, et cetera, et cetera? What is your impact? What do you want your impact to be for the day, right? You may not be here tomorrow. And for however long you are here, what do you want your impact to be? So essentially, we live, we die. What is our impact on this world? Are we a net positive? Is Was it indifferent? Is it a net negative? So we like to ask the guests on the show because – Life, I think, is the game we're playing. Business is just a subset of it, right? It's not the whole purpose of life, I believe. We weren't just put here to run a business. We were put here, I think, to create a, an impact in some way. So I like to ask the guests on the show, what, uh, what do you want your impact to be, gentlemen? Obviously a positive one. We want to be remembered as a person that, that obviously achieved things that their, their goals were set. You want to be that role model that – Unfortunately, when we leave that your kids can look up to and and strive to be strive like, to be your grandkids. Hopefully you last that long that you get to meet them and go like my grandfather. I look back at him pretty much on a daily basis and remember his stories and things he told me. And that helps me go through my life. Right. Actually, when I was in the hospital, one thing that he always told me was you always bet on the white horse. And I was supposed to go in for a full brain surgery where they cut open my whole head and everything. And at the end, they told us about uh, the tube, that they could put a tube in, which is a solution. And they don't have to go in and essentially reset my brain once they, they go in there. Um, and so we went with the white horse. It's the, uh, they always bring them out at the end. And so little things like that always stick in my mind about him. And that's the person that I want to be, that when I pass, people say, oh, this is, this is how he did it. And let's try doing it this way and see if it makes a, an impact in our life. I love it, man. Beautiful story, especially about Gramps. Can you tell me what the white horse is? I haven't heard that before. Uh, horse betting. <laughs> <laughs> so in a track, they, in a track, you always said they bring out the white horse last. And you always bet on the white horse because it's the one that stands out. And the white horse is usually the one that wins. Awesome. <laughs> so, I didn't forget that. But we... Take, take the stories of gambling and we convert them into <laughs> metaphors for life. <laughs> life is a gamble at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, we're always assessing risk. There's a uh, very little certainty other than what do they say? Death and taxes and even taxes for some people aren't a certainty. <laughs> so yeah, there's a few things, right? We're gambling, but um, I really appreciate that, man. I think that's, 
uh, I think it's a great story. I think that's a great reason why to do what we do. How about yourself, Ryan? Uh, yeah, it's just leaving good impressions on the kids, uh, family. I don't know. It's a tough question. I just want to try to be the best person I can be, uh, which is not always the easiest thing. And then no. hopefully any of those traits get passed on to my kids, the good ones, not the bad ones. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's one of those things that you don't really know about until like later. Like even with the kids, when you eventually have them, you don't know if you raised them right until it's too late, until they're like in their 20s. And you don't know if you did a good job or not. And uh, yeah, I, just, I have no idea, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I think I think that's, that's all great. Uh, just trying to leave, essentially what you guys are saying is try to leave the world a little better than you found it. Each person that's come before us, if that was their intention, we get a little bit better. We evolve as a species, get a little bit better. But you're right, though, Ryan. It is hard to be the best version of ourselves. It's hard to be a good human. I think that is a high enough order for each one of us to want to strive for. Just be a good person. And we don't know what the impact is going to be, but we know we're having one. If your intention is to do good, then you're probably doing good. And I'd say that's probably above the average, just trying to do good each day, man. So I love it. You guys have been there. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it's hard sometimes, but uh, no, you guys have been a pleasure to to speak to, teaching us about the animals, your commitment to the community, how the business started, your why behind it. Uh, just great information for us to learn, and um, I'm sure the listeners are, are very happy to learn that as well. So, what's the best way people can find out about you? Uh, we can hit our website. It's wildernessraw.com. Okay. Um, if you guys are in the Innisfil area, you can pass by Stroud. We have a storefront there. My wife yeah. runs the storefront. Um, she's usually there for most of the day. She's very knowledgeable as well. Yeah. And yeah, any information that you need, she can help you get. You can give us a phone call um, and we'll talk you through anything you need. Yeah. Wonderful. Any questions we can. Love it. Love it, guys. Remind me, uh, what's the website? WildernessRaw.ca? Dot com. Dot com. Okay. And is there a phone number or is the, is the, is the website the best place to gather your info? Uh, website is the best place. We all get the, the information from the website. Mm -hmm. um, for phone number, I can give you. Sorry, I just need to pull it up here. Yeah, I love how we have to look up our own phone numbers in this day and age. Yeah. yeah. I know before phones, you had everything memorized. Now it's yeah. like I, I still don't know anybody's numbers. Yeah. <laughs> we are 705. 615-9820. Love it. Gentlemen, it was a real pleasure having you on the shows. We all cherish our animals and you are helping us help our animals have better lives, which we should uh, allow them to do that because in many cases we are in control of the lives of those animals. So it should be a part of our intention to learn what those animals need. And you guys are helping us do that. Greatly appreciate you guys coming on the show. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. All right, you guys have a great day. You Thank as well. You, you too. Take care. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Midhurst. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpmidhurst.com. That's gnpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.